The hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Good evening to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It's Tuesday, the 2nd of February. It is the Feast of Candlemas, or the presentation of Christ in the temple. Now is the time to take down any last Christmas decorations that may still be up, or it is extremely bad luck, or so tradition would have us believe. We're gathered online this evening to pray the Office of Evening Prayer, and I want to thank you for joining us. I'm going to take a few moments to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church, which ascend into heaven even when we can't physically gather for worship. You can do the same along with me if you'd like, and when we're ready, the service of evening prayer will begin on page 20. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 48 and 87, on pages 390 and 441. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, in the city of our God. His holy hill is a fair place, and the joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion of the uttermost parts of the north, the city of the great king. He hath made himself known in her citadels as a sure refuge. For lo, the kings of the earth were gathered and gone by together. They marveled to see such things. They were astonished and suddenly cast down. Fear came there upon them, and anguish as upon a woman in her travail. As when with the east wind thou breakest the ships of the sea. Like as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God upholdeth the same forever. We have thought on thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. O God, according to thy name, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. <coughs> Excuse me. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let the Mount Zion rejoice, and the daughters of Judah be glad, because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion, and go round about her, and count the towers thereof. Mark well her bulwarks, Consider her citadels, that ye may tell them that come after. For this God is our God for ever and ever. He shall be our guide for evermore. His foundation is upon the holy hills. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of thee thou city of God. I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon, as among them that know me. Behold Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. Lo, this one was born there. Yea, of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself shall establish her. The Lord shall reckon when he writeth up the peoples, that this one was born there. The singers also and dancers shall say, 
all my fresh springs are in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Haggai, the second chapter beginning at the first verse. In the seventh month, on the twenty-first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to all the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you, fear not. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, so that the treasures of all nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the first epistle of St. John, the third chapter beginning at the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who does right is righteous, as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. 
Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly beseech thy majesty, that as thy only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, so we may be presented unto thee with pure and clean hearts. By the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. I invite you to call to mind at this point some way in the last 24 hours that you have been especially aware of the presence of God. Where have you seen God at work in the world these days? And just as importantly, what have you seen God doing? Give thanks and praise to Almighty God for the gift of that experience and pray for the grace and the strength and the courage to join in with what God is doing in the world.
Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for joining us this evening. I hope you've got your Christmas decorations down. I hope that these services of morning and evening prayer have been a blessing to you, and I also hope that they're becoming a habit for you, part of your disciplined, ordered life of prayer. Remind you that we pray morning prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7, and we pray evening prayer on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 4.30. And those are the times that the service is premiere, but you can, of course, tune in at any point after that, later in the day, that is convenient for you. Until we gather again, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye.